Joan of Arc was born in 1412 in a small village called Dahmer Mai in northeastern France. At that time, France was going through a difficult period in the Hundred Years' War against England. She was raised in a farming family and grew up as a devout and faithful girl. Her days were filled with tending to her family's sheep, and her dreams were of a peaceful existence like those of the other villagers. Joan was not like the other children. She claimed to hear the voices of saints and angels. These divine messages filled her with an unshakable sense of purpose and an unwavering faith in God. Joan, overwhelmed by her divine calling, decided to leave her home and set out on a journey to meet the Dauphin, the uncrowned heir to the French throne. After getting permission from her parents, Joan went to the palace to meet the heir to the throne. Joan's journey was arduous, filled with uncertainty and danger, but she pressed on, guided by the voices that only she could hear. When she finally arrived at the Dauphin's court, she faced skepticism and doubt. Many doubted the legitimacy of her claims and questioned her abilities. But Joan's unwavering conviction and charisma left a lasting impression on those who met her. Finally, Joan was able to meet the heir to the French throne. She convinced the Dauphin of her divine mission and was granted command of a small army. Joan, clad in a suit of armor and bearing a banner with the image of the Virgin Mary, led her troops into battle. Despite her lack of military experience, her fervor and unshakable faith inspired her soldiers to fight with a newfound determination. Joan's military leadership proved remarkable. In a series of battles, she achieved stunning victories, leading the French forces to reclaim key territories from the English. Her most famous triumph came during the Siege of Orleans, where she turned the tide of the war. She was hailed as the Maid of Orleans, a symbol of hope and inspiration for the beleaguered French people. But Joan's victories came at a cost. She was wounded several times in battle, and her divine visions warned her of a grim fate. The political intrigue and betrayal that often accompanied the French court complicated her mission. Nevertheless, she pressed on, believing that she was on a holy mission to free her homeland. In 1430, Joan was captured by the Burgundians and handed over to the English. She was put on trial for heresy and witchcraft, a trial orchestrated by her enemies who were determined to undermine her divine mission. Joan's trial was a harrowing experience. She faced harsh conditions and was subjected to grueling interrogation. However, despite the relentless pressure, Joan displayed remarkable courage intelligence and eloquence. She defended her divine mission and refused to recant her visions, knowing that it could cost her her life. Sadly, in 1431, Joan of Arc was unjustly found guilty of heresy and witchcraft and condemned to death by burning at the stake. Her death was a somber moment, but it did not extinguish the flame of her legacy. It, in fact, served as a catalyst for the French people, who were deeply moved by her unwavering faith and her sacrifice. As the flames consumed her, Joan's final words were a prayer to God, and she asked that a cross be held high before her. Her death inspired the French people to continue the fight, 
and they eventually drove the English from France. In 1456, a posthumous retrial overturned Joan of Arc's conviction, recognizing her as a martyr and a symbol of faith. Eventually, the Roman Catholic Church canonized her as a saint in 1920, 